Welcome to Crashing with Friends. <laughs> My name's Kyle Hobbs, your host. This week I'm joined by Jackson Brayman. Hello. Kiefer Chase. Hello. Connor Hobbs. Bad boys back, baby. Bad yes. boys back. Yes. Well, thanks for being here this week, guys. So, uh, f- how was your week, Connor? Uh, much better than the week before. I'm not quite as sick as I was. Still getting some stuff out, but... Uh, yeah, it was really bad, man. There for a little while, but feeling feeling a lot better now. Um, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna sound pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I had the a good day. Listeners. I had a good day so far. Um, woke up and played some disc golf. We played the uh, new McClelland, the Eagle, the Easy Eagle. Wasn't so easy with all those tree holes, but uh, had a really good time shooting. I think everybody else had fun too. But uh, yeah, it was lazy day. Kind of uh, took a nap. I took I kind of took like two naps. You know, it was just a really lazy day, but it, it was a good day. So yeah, that's it. Nice. And Keith, what about you, man? Oh. Not really anything. I mean, I woke up to a baby slapping me in the face. Nice. And then I played some video games, and then we went with Shelby's family a little bit before I came over here to go buy a crap load of fireworks because her dad always buys so much. It's ridiculous. Oh, he's it's like one his of favorite those. holiday. Yep. Dude, the first year that I went with them to buy fireworks, they just like kept putting stuff in the cart, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then we got to the end of it, and they... They said the total, and I was just like, that's my whole paycheck. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, 4th of July is pretty crazy. Oh, man. This is, this is like the best thing for me right now. Just watch you try to <laughs> get this microphone right, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's not staying put. Yeah, I'm not sure how to fix that shit. Oh, well. Jeez, it's going to be an hour and a half of kind of... bet on this fight really quick. No. Um, Kiefer, is that all that's been going on with you? Today, anyway. I mean, in a couple days, my album is supposed to come out on July 4th, so that's pretty exciting. What's your album called? Cutter. Cutter. That's it. Not to be confused with butter. No. <laughs> Everybody's going to be searching for that. Not to be confused with nutter. <laughs> nutter. Oh, oh man. man. Did you think about the title, Slutter? <laughs> The only reason that it's called Cutter is I had taken a picture of this, like, box knife whenever I worked at Freeman. And I was, like, messing with it one day because we had to have box knives cut these boxes open. And I had a pen, and I was, just, like, coloring in the engravings. And I, it was a Jiffy Cutter blade. And I colored in Cutter and then what was below it. And I was like, that's pretty cool looking. I took a picture with my phone, and I ran it through, like... 30 filters and got this really cool looking photo and I was like well I guess the album's gonna be called Cutter because it just says in huge lettering Cutter Hey, I was like well now I have to write a song called Cutter (laughs) how's that song go? it goes pretty good (laughs) (laughs) cool we'll listen to those songs here in a second Um, and Jackson how's your week been? Uh, it's been pretty good man just uh I've been falling behind on some shows, but other than that, like, yeah, <laughs> nothing much going on. I know you guys don't give a shit, but there was a AEW, like, Forbidden Door pay-per-view that happened the other day that was pretty sweet. It was like a cross-promotion between, like, Jap- like a Japan promotion and AEW, so... Got to see some like pretty sweet dream matches that no one thought we would ever get. So cool. It was a great event. Great event. Nice. Anything else been going on with you? Uh not really, man. I mean, played some disc golf this morning with you guys and that was a whole lot of fun. My legs are hurt a little bit because I left my disc like back at a hole that was like so far away 
and I didn't realize how far it was. I was jogging through most of it, and there was like a part of it that was just going straight uphill. And I jogged, I fucking Rocky Balboa up that little hill. Throw some yeah. air punches when you get to the top? No, I put, <laughs> put like some hand knees action. You know? like, <laughs> Hell yeah. I was, I was out of breath. Yeah, I'm not a good jogger. It turns out I'm not really good at running. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll die in a zombie apocalypse if they can run. For sure. I think most people would. <laughs> yeah, if they start running, we're all screwed. Yep. Yeah, I was really impressed with uh, the extent of the addition, to, like just what they did to that course, man. It's insane. Yeah, McClellan is nice. Like we we weren't even playing in any of the normal sections, really. We were playing in all these like woods areas. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, like I don't understand how you can make a freaking winding path through a forest and clear it out and have it look awesome to throw at. But so many of those holes at, at the new McClellan course are just uh, like a professional course. It's Every shot is like you got to have confidence that you're going to hit this certain gap. Like there's like a few holes where you can kind of mess up a little bit. But like at least half the shots are through woods. And you got to be confident that you're hitting that shot. Yeah. It's crazy. The old course was child's play compared to this new course. Yeah. Man, uh, there used to be so much openness, some some big trees here and there, but a lot of openness. Not anymore. It's all like tunnel shots. Yeah, I ended up losing a disc on like one of the like hole four or something like that, hole three or hole four, and it was so stupid because I just lost it in the high grass and I was like pissed off because I was literally bitching about the tall grass there. It's like, man, this used to be all mode. Mm -hmm. used to look really nice but and playing the whole course I can see why they don't mow it all because man that would be a whole lot of mowing and upkeep if you're going to do the whole entire course it's like two to three times bigger than it was man it's crazy and it yeah. was a 27 hole now it's like 18 times 4 whatever that is that's how many holes it is <laughs> crazy. it's a lot of fun though man um, I hope that it does get picked for like a PDGA tour because if they, you'd like that, if it does, you know that they would have to keep that upkeep on it, like you know, up going. So it'd be a lot nicer. I don't know. This yeah. is my thinking. Be nice to see them get all the poles added for the bags and stuff eventually. I mean, it's a lot of holes to do it on, but that'd be cool. Yeah. Um. We're receiving signals. Somebody contact NASA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who, who was perfect. that? What was that about? Like, like, for his phone's yeah, connected to the Bluetooth. Yeah, 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 I guess okay. that's what it is. It's it's like, probably just saying, hey, you're still connected. Like China's getting signals. We're getting signals, man. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. yeah, so, so that's been my week. <laughs> how's your week been, Kyle? Yeah. My been... week's been pretty good. Yeah. Um, got moved to a new department at work. And it's actually been for the... for I, I've actually uh, not been too mad about it. Hell yeah. Surprisingly. I'm in a, I'm in a location. Um, you should just um, turn the volume all the way down on your phone or something, maybe. But um, <laughs> so I've just really, that's been a, an interesting week. Yeah, turn the volume down like that. <laughs> yeah, you've been doing that all week. It's been an interesting week, so um, good, bro. played a lot of disc golf. Played like two different times, and then played today as well. Really been getting back into it, trying to get my knees where they need to be, because a lot of my throw is is all in my legs. You know, a lot of my drive is in my legs. And the way I'm throwing now, I just don't have the very, the most confidence in my throwing technique right now. Yeah. Because I'm just so scared that I'm going to overthrow it, throw it real hard, and, and do something bad to my to my surgically repaired right knee. They're both surgically repaired, but my left knee is fine. I'm not worried about it. 
but um yeah it's pretty good uh the new last or uh, uh for, for all mankind, mankind is pretty good i'm only about 30 minutes in but i was really loving that um i got I'm s- still playing final fantasy 7 remake on pc it's so much fun man the story is so fun so fun and so good but uh man there's some some corny parts as far as the acting goes and as far as the voices and stuff it's very interesting it's definitely like you're playing an anime for sure yeah you know love tifa though oh god yeah i keep thinking why are her eyes red it's so interesting but hey that's how it goes um my wife and kids finally got back from their from their uh, vacation in pennsylvania i was pretty um stir crazy and going freaking insane not having anybody here in the house but it's been it's been good so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked they're back. Yeah, I forgot they were gone. They were gone. Saying something about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would hate being alone at the house, dude. Yeah, it was pretty uh, pretty boring. You run upstairs and be like, "Look what I did!" Yeah, it's kind of how I felt. All right, so uh, let's get into our first topic of the night. What is it, Kyle? <laughs> What's the first topic? <laughs> the first topic of the night is what would you replace your head with as far as an animal goes? Would like, you would you replace it with a koala head? You could still talk. Okay. Everything would be still be the same. So I've got the human body, but the head is going to be an animal head. Exactly. Okay. What head would you choose? Oh, uh, man. Ooh, that's a... I don't know. There's so many animals to choose from. Do you got one? <laughs> um, yeah. I would like a... Have like a flamingo's head. I think that'd be pretty cool. A flamingo's head? Yeah, anything with a really long neck. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, So does the neck count? Is it part of the head or do you just get the head? Oh, shit. Because I was thinking that too. I was like, a giraffe would be cool. But I'm like, what if it's just the giraffe head? (laughs) Yeah, it would look really weird. (laughs) I'd say you can have the neck along with the head. Okay. That would look crazy, though. (laughs) (laughs) You have the giraffe neck, but it's on a human body. Especially with how wide my shoulders are and how big the upper part of my body is. It would look so weird. You could increase your overall height without having to do anything except change your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you do that thing that giraffes do when they're like slapping each other with their necks. Uh huh. Yeah. I would think in like my head, like if my head was a giraffe head, I would probably or probably be like, I don't know, succumb to like a wheelchair or something like that because like he's never been able to use his legs. His neck is literally like four times his body weight. So. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be really hard to balance, probably. You'd be like, <laughs> run all over the place. Draft necks are fat, bro. And then I was also thinking about um, like a lion's head with a giant mane. That'd be cool. But if I had that kind of head, I would always have to be wearing a suit and tie. Like a businessman, like a lawyer, a lawyer lion. Okay, yeah, yeah. Kyle Hobbs, lawyer lion, attorney at law. Hell yeah, yeah. They're lion. They're <laughs> <laughs> no, your honor. They're lion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I would totally. I, I'm stuck between two. I would either go with a koala. Or I would go with a raccoon. Okay, yeah. And I'm just trying to imagine myself as like, I don't know, an everyday person, but I'm just like raccoon person, raccoon head, or, I don't know. Yeah? There's there's literally so many possibilities. Sell it. Sell it. (laughs) Would you get a whole bunch of, like, earrings? Um, if I was the, uh... If I was the raccoon, yeah. 
Maybe like a gold tooth. I mean, yeah. I am a bandit. You know, I'd lean into that. Yeah. What about you, Connor? Well, uh, for like what head I would choose for my own head, I would say, I don't know, I'm kind of stuck between two. Um, either a rhino head, which would be really cool because you'd have the big horn. Yeah. You know, and people would just think that that's dope. But uh, also a wolf head because you could still get, like, they've got lips and stuff. Because I was thinking, I was thinking, man, shark would be cool, but then. I don't know, the lips are weird, plus, you know, you got all the shark, the sharp teeth, but yeah, I think wolf would be the good balance of sharp, sharp teeth and, uh, yeah, an actual face and stuff. If you were a wolf's head, you'd always have to be smoking a cigarette. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> you yep. have to wear like one of those like Scottish caps or whatever. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> So, um, I guess I'd go rhino then. If I've, if I've got <laughs> those two things of being a wolf, I'll, I guess I'll be a rhino. Um, the rhino has to wear an engineer hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he's, <laughs> like he's, he wears it all so <laughs> hard hat. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as far as the, uh, what would I put in my head? Like what, what, yeah, exactly. My head being put on an animal body, I think being put on like a raptor or something would be cool. So, yeah. Have my head just coming at you. Yeah. So we're terror. We're gonna, do, we're gonna do bodies now. Yeah, we're doing bodies. Well, let's oh, hear shit. Kiefer's head first. Yeah, let's hear his head. English bulldog. Okay. Got, like, okay. All that extra skin all over their face, you could like pull it all back. <laughs> oh my or, god. Or anytime you just like shake your head, it would just be like lots of lots of gross. <laughs> Be a year Skin into it, sounds. be like, why are the big English d- bulldog? I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah, that would be a big problem. I can picture you in like a red tracksuit with like a gold chain. Yes. That would totally work. Yes. That would totally work. Or just a wife beater in some gym shorts. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Basically, Carl with from like Aquatine <laughs> Hunger Force. High tops. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. So what about your body then? What would you flip flop that with? Your your regular head on what type of animal body? Yeah, I think a raptor would be really cool. So again, do you get the neck? Um, or would it just be your head on the end of the torso of the yeah. raptor? Well, I mean, I think you get the <laughs> neck in this situation for sure. Yeah, you get the neck. Yeah, because why wouldn't you get the neck? We're just swapping heads, right? Yeah. Now, when we do these swaps. Uh, with our head on this animal body, do we instantly get the skin and fur of that animal? No. It's literally your human head, the head you have right now, on top of an animal's it's body. It's Frankenstein style. Yeah. Okay. You can see the scar and everything. Yeah. So for mine, I was thinking, because I'd like to see my head on an elephant's body, but I'd, <laughs> I'd have to... <laughs> But I'd have to have the big ears and the nose coming out of my face. I would I would allow for your head to increase in size, but nothing else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you think, Keith? Oh, you like a vulture? Just being a giant bird with a person's head? Heck yeah. But it'd be like a gross giant bird. Yes. That'd be cool. Just go around screaming at people. <laughs> <laughs> just fly around. <laughs> Do that thing where you like spread your wings and you're like, that's what I've been thinking about, man. That shit's scary, man. Yeah. It is scary. And they do like those hops, like. <laughs> and we went to this like abandoned house in Neosho one time out past Old Seneca Road. There's like, you go out into the woods a long ways, and we saw it on the GPS. You could see it from like the satellite view. There was a house out there. We went all the way out there, and it was like this abandoned house in this clearing. No one lived there. We went inside, and we were walking by this bathroom, and we heard this hissing, and we looked in there, and there was this massive vulture in the bathtub. That's rad. Yeah, it was crazy. It taking a shit? I don't know what it was doing, but it was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> well. 
Probably it's nest, man. He's yeah, sitting there. The, so. He's got the water running, and he's got a freaking <laughs> bubble bath. <laughs> he's got a bubble bath going, <laughs> but he's also got a toaster. He's about to drop it inside. The t- <laughs> <laughs> it's about to end it, and you were the last one. You saved that vulture's life, Kiefer. What do you think about Jack for your body? Um, I mean, the first thing I thought of was a giraffe, but the more I started thinking about it, a silverback gorilla. Okay. Man, that'd, that'd be, be so funny. Be like you, a shaved gorilla, <laughs> almost. You know how those gorillas will charge real fast at somebody or something? Yeah. That'd be really funny to see your head on one of those <laughs> charging real fast at something. So do you still yeah. have your long hair? <laughs> huh? Do you still have your long hair with your gorilla body? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You it's just to. flying behind him as he's charging somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. So. <laughs> for our second topic tonight, then. Um, what food best describes you and your personality? What do you think, Kiefer? I don't know. Cause like I like Chinese food, but I don't know that that would explain me very well. Okay, I guess I'll go first. Okay. So I, I was thinking about this. I thought of a few things, and it's got to be a savory dish for me. Because although I do like my sweets, uh, that ain't me. It's all about the savory. It's about the meat. And I don't know, man. I feel like these pork tacos, man. I feel like these pork street tacos, man, They they capture me. They explain me. They they taste so good. <laughs> well, wh- the what? thing is, you know, when I think about me, I'm thinking finger food immediately. Pow, finger food. You know, right there with savory. It's like I'm not this like, you know, little fork, little spoon guy. You know, I'm this. Grab it with your hands. Eat it like a man. Get the lime, squirt the lime juice all over it. There's some hot sauce there. Put some hot sauce on that, dude. <laughs> you know, because these, these street tacos I've been getting at Speedy Burrito, man, they're pretty good. Three different kinds of meat if you want it. I usually get the pork tacos, but it's got, like, onions and cilantro. And they've got a few of these, like, like side things that you can add to it. You get refried beans if you want it. Salsa, all that good stuff. But how does those how did those tacos explain your personality? Well, like, I are just, you are I've you zany? A few things. Well, I'm saying, are you zany? Like how these flavors are, or you know what I'm saying? Well, I just explained how it's savory. And, and you think you're a, finger, you think you're a, you think you're a savory person. That's what I've been explaining this whole time. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I think. And I also explained how I'm like a finger food and how I'm not a sweet. Okay. I feel you. I hit you in the mouth with that lime juice, man. You're not expecting it, but you poured it on there so you knew it was there. Right. Your hand gets a little bit wet, but that's okay. You got to lick that shit off your hand. <laughs> okay. That's me. Thank you for what's you, man. What are you thinking here? So I'm thinking just like a regular old chicken tender. Because if you saw me from a distance, you'd be like, that just looks like a regular guy. But maybe the chicken tender is spicy and you don't know it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just normal. You can find it anywhere. Just kind of a regular person. Right. For the most part. Unless you look closely, I guess. Now are you Are you spicy? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I guess it could be. Um are you breaded? Oh, for sure. Deep fried? Deep fried, yes. A little crunchy. <laughs> I, I, get, get I get a little crunchy from you, yeah. You're what? still moist on the inside? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so, probably. So, I chose not to do one about myself. Jackson... I chose one about you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, Jackson. I got you. Okay, <laughs> let's hear it. What the fuck? You're a piece of celery fuck with you. some peanut butter on it. <laughs> fuck you. Because you're long, lanky. You got maybe a little bit of concave. 
But you're easy to fill up with peanut butter. With peanut butter. <laughs> now put that peanut butter in your mouth, boy. No, I can't eat very much of you, Jackson. I wouldn't eat very much of me. But fuck you, I ain't sorry. <laughs> but I can chop you up and put you in a good dish, but I have to have you really small. You know what I'm saying? You know what you fucking are? What am I, Jackson? You fucking cottage cheese, bro. <laughs> why, am I, why am I cottage cheese, Jack? You fucking cottage cheese because nobody wants you, bro. <laughs> That's fucked up. I love cottage cheese. You put some jalapenos in there, maybe some green olives. Uh, fucking gross, bro. <laughs> <laughs> gross. <laughs> yeah. F- fucking, Yeah. Cottage cheese, bro. That's what you are. <laughs> you really didn't do it for yourself, dude? No. no. But for real. For myself. <laughs> for myself, uh, I don't know. I would probably go with, uh, I don't know. Rolos. Rolos, huh? Because everybody loves caramel. And it's caramel. But what, how does that describe That's, your personality? I don't know, man. I just started thinking about what would I dude. want right now, and I was like, Rolos sound You awesome. said Rolos. I'm like, dude, I'm thinking about getting some Rolos, man. <laughs> Rolos are great, dude. Who doesn't love Rolos, man? So Whenever the, they hear Rolos, they want Rolos. Yeah, I want some Rolos right now. So I think the food that best describes me is a big old bowl of gumbo. There's a lot of ingredients in there. A lot of stuff makes up gumbo. And I think that's how I am, man. I've got a lot of color, a lot of shades to me, you know? Oh, that's deep, man. Yeah. (laughs) See, (laughs) at face value, some of my ingredients, they're not the best. Not the best. But you put all these ingredients together and you get something fantastic that grows on you. I'm a little spicy, just like gumbo. But I'm also, uh, or gumbo tastes good, and I think deep down I'm a good person. Yeah. Yeah? With shades. You taste good, Kyle. Also, I'll, I'll take back what I said about the cottage cheese thing. And I take back the celery thing, Jack. <laughs> and I'll say you taste good. <laughs> My mom really loved <laughs> celery when I was a kid. I think she likes you too, Jack. <laughs> but see, I, there's also celery in gumbo, but you gotta cut it up real small, or yeah, I don't want it. Like I, I've had like like certain vegetables. Like I just don't like them, you know. And like they're like you were talking about, like they're chunky like, form. They're chunky form, right? I can have like chives and stuff like that. Like chaff, mixed in turkey, with like other stuff. Yeah. So is good like, like soups time. usually, you know. Mm-hmm. You can get a, a lot of other vegetables and meats in there to go along with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And on to our next topic of the night. I think Connor had a game for us. Yeah. So it's a game about movies. Oh, shit. Woo! I'm going to be so bad at this game. You I feel think like I've that? watched like five movies five hundred times. Ugh. All right, now all these are super easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I'm so like a jackass if I don't get them now. This this one is going to be for a special prize. Um, Jackson. Uh, the prize. Yes. Um the the prize is if, um the uh, a full like family giveaway tickets and everything to go to the three F's concert tonight. France Ferdinand, Frankie <laughs> Munez, and uh, Fergie. Hmm. Yeah, was, what a lineup. You know Fergie Peter Pants at one time, right? Mm, that's hot. Yeah, that's why she's the opener. And she kept dancing. Yeah, and Frankie Munez is gonna be dancing right after her, dude. So, all right. So, wow. If you guys, Malcolm Middle, Franz Ferdinand, whoever wins gets to choose what kind of pizza we get as the prize. 
I love it. If someone wants pizza. Sounds good to me. Let's go. All right. I'm for you, bro. Okay, let's do Fergie it. Fergie pizza. Pee pee pizza. All right. Uh, awaiting their babysitter. Little Conrad and Sally meet a talking cat who tries to flip their... Kyle. Room. The cat in the hat. Uh, Dr. Seuss is the cat in the hat. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you had me flip for a second because you were like, mm. I was like, well, what else could that fucking be? <laughs> <laughs> All right. A former Olympic skier begins running a high stakes, ultra exclusive underground poker game that catches the attention of the FBI. Kyle, Molly's game. Yeah. You guys gonna let Kyle steamroll you like this? I've never seen Molly's game. It's fantastic, guys. It is so good. It's based off a real story, I believe. Mm. All right, number three. Following the death of their friend, three buddies realize their lifelong dream of chasing. Without a paddle. Yeah, that's right. Motherfucker. After the loot of infamous skyjacker D.B. Cooper. As kids vanish through, <laughs> as kids vanish throughout town, a group of outcasts must face their biggest fears, as well as a murderous, terrifying, and seemingly invincible clown. Kyle, Not, uh, it. <laughs> Gosh, guys, <laughs> you, remember, you guys have to say was, your names. It was too late. <laughs> During a trip to Germany to scatter their grandfather's ashes. Jackson. Fucking beer fest, dude. <laughs> okay, yes, it is That's all I needed to hear, dude. I love that movie, man. <laughs> ah, beer brothers, fest is a classic to me. Brothers Todd and Jan discover beer fest, a secret Olympics of downing stout and sluts. <laughs> <laughs> and sluts. <laughs> Whoa. A gentle, friendly man navigates through the major events of the 1960s and 70s while Jackson. inspiring. Forrest Gump? <laughs> yep. <laughs> inspiring those around him. He's coming! He's, he's coming back! <laughs> With his perpetual optimism. Jackson's taken out of the end zone! Okay. Super Agent Blank and his team take on another deadly mission to prove their innocence when they are framed for the bombing of the Kremlin. Kyle. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Jackson. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Ghost Protocol. <laughs> in the re- in this reboot of the hit superhero franchise, High schooler Blank learns to wield his newfound powers while facing down an arch villain, the Blank. Uh, Jackson. Uh, Spider Man? Wrong. Uh. Kyle, Sky High. Wrong. Jackson. The Amazing Spider Man. The Amazing <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> 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 Uh, four, four, I like it. it. It's heating up. We got... (laughs) He feels it slipping away. (laughs) We got two more, that's it. (laughs) Devastated after being dumped, a musician takes a healing trip to blank, but winds up at the same resort as his TV star... Jackson! Forget he's out of Marshall! Oh my god. (laughs) Never seen that. In the 1970s, blank... A hotshot anchor and his news Kyle, team. Kyle, <laughs> anchorman, the oh. legend of Ron Burgundy. Okay, yeah. Are we tied then? <laughs> we are tied. <laughs> Ooh. Oh man. Okay, let me find. Let me find something really quick. See if you just try to go with a like a random obscure one, one that might be tough. Okay. Um, here we go, guys. For all the marbles and the pizza choice. Ooh. All right. Scientists, soldiers, and adventurers unite to explore a mythical uncharted island in the Pacific Ocean. Cut off from everything they know, they venture into the domain of the mighty blank. Kyle. King Kong. Wrong. 
igniting the ultimate battle between man and nature. As their mission of discovery soon becomes one of survival, they must fight to escape from a primal world where humanity does not belong. Kyle. Kong Skull Island. I mean, that's right, but, I mean, you didn't even give these other guys the chance to answer. I did. Didn't I, didn't you guys feel like you had a chance to answer? Yeah. I had a chance to answer. <laughs> I was All thinking right. King I'll, Kong I'll, I'll give it to that. Kyle. Because okay. I was trying, like, even after you finished that, I was still trying to think of, like, what it was. Yeah, because right. he said King Kong, and I was like, well, if that's not it, it's probably a new movie, and I have no idea what it's called. I, I, I after you it. said no to King Kong, I started thinking Planet of the Apes. But. Well, it's Kong Skull Island, Jackson. It's Kong Skull if, Island. If you wanted pizza so bad, you should have answered it that <laughs> way, man. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pineapple and Canadian bacon it is. Ugh. I'm cool with that. Get ready for that, Jack. <laughs> Fucking pineapple, bro. Oh yeah. I bought some jalapeno pineapple dip from Sam's Club. I that sounds it. good. It's really good. Wow. It's like cream cheese, jalapenos, and like big chunks of pineapple. Huh. Sign me up. Alright, so key for the... We wanted to have you back on because you are releasing this album on July 4th. Um, what are the bandmates in your band again? So the main ones are me and then my friend Kanan and then my other friend Tyler plays guitar and helps us out sometimes whenever he has time. So it's mostly me and Kanan, but Tyler has contributed to like at least two of the songs. That's pretty cool. And what's the name of your band again? Social Survivor. And the name of the album? Cutter. 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 Now, did you bring some songs for us to listen to? I've got a bunch of songs. I mean, I've got eight, I guess. Not okay, we're going to listen to all eight songs. All back, eight. To back to back to back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> and we're also going to be uh, LARPing in the background for those watching on TV. By LARPing, you mean we're going to be having a slap fight during the song? <laughs> yes, with swords. <laughs> with swords. I'll okay. be pantsless. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned for that. All right, so what's the name of the first song you're going to play? How many am I playing? Uh, I just played two. Two? Two okay. of your favorites. So, <clears throat> I'll play Cutter. Okay. Because it's, it's pretty good. How much do you want me to turn this back up to what it was? Yeah, sure. Turn, turn it up to max.
friggin' uh, there's like certain parts. Like, have you ever heard of the band? Uh, uh, what's it called? American Football. <laughs> oh man, there's just like a couple part. Like during like the slow parts, like I was like, oh dude, I get like American Football feels right here, which is a good thing. Yeah, good I wrote thing. this song a long time ago, and. I have, I think I still have the original version of it. it. Didn't have any of the slow parts in it. It was just, it didn't really have them. Actually, it might not have them at all. I can't remember. But I went back and I had to re-record it for this new album because it was not great sounding. And when I was re-recording it, I was just kind of like messing around with stuff. And I came up with that guitar part and I sent it to Kanan. He plays bass and he came up with a bass part. And it's cool. You'll have time to listen to it whenever it comes out, and maybe you can hear what I'm talking about. But there's a part where I'm picking notes, and he's playing straight bass notes, and then it switches to where I'm playing chords really quick, and then he's playing a little bit slower on the bass guitar, so it like flips the styles back and forth between oh, the bass cool. and guitar. And he just listened to my guitar playing, and he just wrote that bass part. And it's like, that song had a bass part before. Freaking sucked. Like, that song, the last three songs in the album was when I recorded with Kanan on the new software. So you'll hear like almost like a progression of how the music just sounds better as far as sound quality. And then it just sounds better as far as quality in general, because I'm not a bass player and Kanan completely changed the sound of some of the songs with the bass parts he came up with and they sound way better. Wow. That's pretty cool. I love it, man. Thanks. That sounds so good. I always, I always get it's really nerve wracking for me to show people stuff because I'm like, yeah, listen to this song, it's so good, and I'm like, have I talked it up too much? Is it gonna I get, suck? I get <clears throat> st uh, uh, stp vibe, vibes from a little bit, and then I get uh, a little bit of filter, and then some parts sounded kind of like Anthony Kiedis from Chili Peppers a little bit. Okay, so that's that was something else I was gonna mention. I was kind of hoping you'd say that. When I was playing, when I wrote this song, I was learning how to play a Red Hot Chili Pepper song. That yeah. beginning riff, there's I don't remember what song it is by Red Hot Chili Peppers, but it has a similar thing. And I was learning how to play it, and then I hit a chord by accident. I was like, "Oh, that sounds cool!" And then I wrote this whole song. That's pretty awesome. And that's normally what happens when I'm writing music. If I get bored, I'll just learn other stuff, and then I'll play something by accident. I'm like, "Oh, that sounds cool!" And then I just like write a song. Yeah, man. <laughs> Sounds so awesome from the first time you ever let me listen to anything, which was probably about a year ago. And it was like in its infancy, you know, it's just so cool to hear where it's at now. Yeah, it's in album form about to come out, you know, it's so cool. Yep, I've purchased a lot of crap since then. Yeah. And I've gotten a lot better software and I've just gotten more actually committed to doing it. I was like, I need I need a reason to actually like have a goal because I don't normally set goals for myself. I kind of just. Especially now, I might do common. I'm like, just go to work, go home. And so you're, I, like, I need something to motivate me to do more than just that. And you guys are writing your second <clears throat> album already, aren't you? Yeah, we're starting. It, it's in its preemptive stage, I guess. We've got like parts for songs written and kind of like little excerpts and things. Cool, man. It's really awesome. Yeah. So, what's the second song you got for us? So. <clears throat> I'm going to play the song. So there's eight songs in the album. The very last song is one that Kanan wrote, and he was going to have me help him with it, but he said to me, done, basically, and I was like, it doesn't need anything else. So I figured I'll show you that because it's, it's really good. So Kanan sings this one. Kanan really, he did all of the work on this one by himself. This is called Sentry. That last one was, last one was Cutter, which...
this is something that we're working on now. And I was I kind of want to hear what you guys think about it. I think it's pretty cool. This is I don't I don't necessarily say that this is going to be the sound that the new album would have, like the one that we're working on after this. This might be a separate project. Well, not a separate name. project. It'll just be within there. I'm not I'm not going to say this is what every song will sound like, but this is something that we're working on. I think sounds really cool. Um, but Kanan sent me this the other day. He's done the the most. He's done all the work on this so far. It's not done, but it, I mean, I feel like it's done enough for me to show you, and it's pretty fucking cool. Interesting. Yeah, I like that, man. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. It reminded me a lot of like Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson. Yeah, kinda. if your second album sounds a lot like that, man, it's gonna be like completely night and day from this album to second album. Yeah, and that's the that's the other thing. Uh, along with like all those recordings being old on this album that's coming out, they kind of almost go in the order that I wrote them as far as like like chronologically. So. Except for the first song. The first song was written way later than the rest of them, but I thought it would be best first because it sounds really good, and I wanted the first song to be interesting at least so people have a reason to keep listening to it. But And it almost goes in chronological order also in the way that like me, the music has evolved and the way I've played music. Like It started out kind of more like 
grungy and nirvana ish kind of music and then as it slowly gets toward the bottom of the album it sounds more like cutter where it's a little bit heavier and a little bit more melodic it's most impressive thank you i'm looking forward to listening to the album dude me too (laughs) even though i've listened to it like a lot i'm excited to listen to it on like spotify or apple music i think that'll be cool just to see it too that is gonna be cool man i'm very uh stoked for you dude it's really awesome (laughs) that you made something making something is is such a hard thing to do it's cool that it's happening in two days because like i remember when i first started playing guitar this is what i wanted to happen and that was like 2014 so right it's been a hot minute can't have no in your heart man yeah life's a garden dig it yep (laughs) quote joe dirt right there (laughs) yeah so jackson when's your album gonna come out when's my album gonna come out well shit dog it's gonna be coming out next week it's gonna be dropping at your mom's house (laughs) (laughs) all right and uh let's move into yo dude check this out Ooh. So who All wants right. to start us off? Okay, well, I'll go ahead and uh, start it off. Uh, it's kind of just like a movie news for uh, you nerds out there, but uh, The Exorcist is for sure getting a remake, and it's slated to come out like sometime next year, around Friday, October 13th. And I've really been waiting a long time for like a really good reboot of the original Exorcist, and not just like a shitty sequel so I'm really stoked for that, but also um, I think it, like maybe seven days from now. I'm not entirely sure uh, the date of when it's supposed to actually drop, but the trailer for Clerks Three is going to be dropping pretty yeah. soon. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see what that trailer is going to look like. Kevin Smith has learned a lot about movie making over the last twenty, thirty years, so we'll see how this one is. I feel like it'll... I don't know. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I think there's going to be a lot of celebrities in this movie. I think that. I think so, too. Because we, uh, w- once he had that heart attack, he had a Widowmaker heart attack, which is a very slim chance you live, man. He made it out of that alive. And because he made it out of that um, heart attack alive, all these stars are just coming to be in this movie just because they're like, shoot, we almost lost Kevin Smith. I gotta be in the. I gotta be in Clerks Three, you know. Yeah, I gotta be in the next Kevin Smith movie. movie so yeah, and it might now, be his last one. And he was fat when he had the heart attack. Now he's super skinny, and it's like weird. Yeah, he's so. lost a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of weight. Doesn't even look the same. Yep. But, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who's up next? I'll go. Um, you dude, check this out. On this day in 1937, American aviation pioneer Amelia Earhart disappeared in the Central Pacific during an attempt to fly around the world. Wow. Did she crash? Did she get abducted? Did she fly to the moon? What happened? Who knows, man? Was the Bermuda Triangle? Yep. Who knows? I've been in the Bermuda Triangle. Really? And you came out alive? Apparently part of Florida... Like, the actual state is in the triangle, like, makes up the triangle. So, you can oh, wow. be in it without actually having to be very far out into the water. And yeah. that explains, like, all the crazy shit that happens, that happens in, in Florida. Florida, Florida so, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I would love to know what happened to her. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, what kind of plane was she flying? I mean, it could have just ran out of fuel and crashed, but it's weird that it happened in that mysterious area where everything disappears and the ocean is so vast man it'd be so hard to find her Mm -hmm. she wasn't actually trying to get around the world she was just trying to get away from her (laughs) ex-husband this is a good place to crash yeah alright so uh, all cheese has high calcium we know that but blue cheese specifically has even higher calcium content it can help people achieve higher bone density over time and helps protect bones and risk, uh, help reduce risk of developing osteoporosis. And also the mold is called penicillin. And that's what gives it its green color. 
So there's mold in the cheese. It's a special mold that's added to the cheese. Wow. Well, I knew that. Yeah, even the, the penis killing thing. I was like... <laughs> Man, blue cheese is so good, too. I don't think I've ever had blue cheese. Really? Let's get on cheeseburger, man. And it is good on cheeseburger. I'm not like the biggest fan of it. I will have it on like a cheeseburger, but I don't like a bunch of blue cheese. <laughs> man, whenever like, I think you do, you want it. <laughs> now you got to give like a kid that his whole life and just see how strong his bones are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when we were <laughs> kids, it'd, it'd be like freaking a superhero. <laughs> when we were kids, I always remember stealing some blue cheese out of the blue cheese container. Like we, I I love eating blue cheese, man. It tastes so good. Is it good that shape. kind of like crumbly cheese? Is it yeah, like it's that? crumbly, but it's got like a tint of blue to it. Maybe sometimes a little bit of green to it. <laughs> but it's just got a little tint to it, and it's just that's that mold on it, man. It's so good. Mm. It's good cheese. So yo, dude, check this out. <laughs> World's only floating post office is on. Uh, on Dahl Lake and delivers letters to people living on the water. So there's only one floating post office in the whole world. And yeah, like I said, it's located on Kashmir's famous Dahl Lake. But yeah, there's one. That's crazy. I'm not <laughs> so is it floating it, like, like, like a dock floats in the water? No, it's more like a boat. Hmm. Yeah. So, do they use the post office to like? Do they drive the post office around, or are there yeah, they, it's just a they just drive the post office around. Huh. Yeah. I think I've seen like videos of like them like driving by like uh, whatever, and then like they have one person at the front of the boat that jumps off, delivers mail real quick, and then tries to run back to the boat. I've seen a couple fails, too. I've seen, yeah. I've seen what you're talking about before. They're, like, on the front, and they just run all the way down the dock and give the person the thing and then run all the way back to the boat so it doesn't have to stop. Yeah. Oh, man. The, I love, like, the look of just, like, oh, fuck. Like, whenever they don't make it back. Yeah. It's so funny to me. You guys, you guys see that uh, concept art for that, like, hotel in the sky thing? Yeah. I, fucking crazy looking, isn't it? Yeah, there's there's concept right now of, a, of just a giant freaking plane that flies around in the air. And it's it a looks, hotel. It looks absolutely insane. It's got, like, 12 jet boosters. It's got, like, like two stacks of wings. And, like, in the back of it, on, like, the back of the tail, there's, like, a, like a big room that's like a, a 360 panoramic room with like a seamless view of the entire sky. It's insane looking. If you guys haven't seen it, How it looks like a Transformer had an airplane. You know? <laughs> yes. It's fucking insane looking. Find pictures of it, this right How now. many people can it hold? It's a hotel in the sky that would never have to land. It would be able to maintain repairs so, while in the sky is what it says. So do, will they just refuel it like with refueling planes? Yeah. That's Holy crazy. shit. Is this supposed to look like a freaking like airline cruiser? Like a, Or like a, you like, know, like a cruiser? Does he have the right picture, Kyle? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Doesn't it look crazy, man? Well, when I click on images, it brings up freaking pictures of actual hotels. Like, but well, that's uh, kind of what we want. Floating cities, man. Yeah, it's is that what you're talking? Hey, chicky chicha. Yeah, is that what you're talking about? It kind of looks like it. Yeah, that is insane. Because that's looking. like a video or something, right? Yeah, but if you like look at it from the front, it just looks like a. It literally just looks like a, like a cruise like a, ship. Yeah, a cruise ship. Right. It's gonna be crazy seeing planes landing on there, docking, flying away. It's like a flying aircraft aircraft carrier. It's wild. There's a picture of a freaking. <laughs> oh man, that's like a commercial air flight, like docking on the top of it. <laughs> That's so small. How's that thing gonna lift off? How's, yeah, yeah, how's that thing gonna stay in the air? Science. Is it gonna just be way high up in the atmosphere where it's not gonna matter? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the pictures, bro. <laughs> That's about it. it blew my mind. He thought our gas crisis was bad now. That yeah. thing flying around. <laughs> like the, the article I read was just talking about how impractical it really is. You know, like it, it's insane. The thing is going to get happen. built, and only the richest people are going to get on it, and then they're going to eventually be like, 
we're gonna have to like fix this thing to go into deep space. Right. Eventually, and that thing is gonna, gonna crash. be just us for the, when the asteroid comes. Yeah, all the rich people are gonna live on it for like hundred years or something. Yeah. And when they finally land, it's like the entire world is destroyed. From just <laughs> all the idiots running around. You know? <laughs> All right. Well, that is Crashing with Friends. Thank you guys for being on the podcast. Before we get out of here, Kiefer, give us that release date and everything again. So it's uh, Social Survivor, and the album is Cutter, and it comes out July 4th. July 4th. And what platform is it on? Pretty much anything you could think of. Like uh, The big ones is like Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, um, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube, yeah. it'll be available. Something else I was going to say before we go. I have released one song already, so you can find the band, but I released it in December last year, and I have made money off of it. I just found out. Really? Have I told you that I've... Uh -uh. Okay. How much money do you think I've made off this one song since December of last year? Five dollars. Seven fifty. If I had to guess, you have made two... One cent. I have made eighty three cents. Eighty three cents. Okay. I was I was like I was gonna go way low just because I was <laughs> yeah. like, man, I, I know I always, how their shit works. I always just so. assumed that the way those things would pay you would be after you hit a certain view count or stream count, then they're like, okay, now we'll start paying you per stream. But it's immediate, so you get paid per stream immediately. I don't know if the more you get, the more they pay you per stream, but I did the math on it, and it's somewhere around. 0.44 of a penny so it's a little less than half a penny per stream and how many how many streams have you had i think that one song has had like 160 something since it released so Heck not yeah, a ton man. but i also didn't really tell anybody about it i kind of just released it and i told some people at work so i mean i'm sure a lot of those is probably me to be honest and then you know like maybe my dad or somebody but i'm hoping that we'll get a decent amount with this album that's coming out, I'm told more people have advertised a little bit on Facebook, and I hung some posters up around town. Hell yeah. So, hopefully it gets something. We'll see. Kanan's mom actually ordered pre-ordered our album on iTunes, so that's $7. Heck yeah. Yep. So, that's cool. And I think we're going to actually order some physical albums. I think I showed you the picture of it or something, maybe. Uh -huh. So I think we're going to try. Or no, I told you I was going to give you one. That's what it was. Yeah. So, so we're going to work on doing that. Um, we'll probably do that in the next month or two. And then it takes like four weeks for them to be made and shipped. So it'll probably be closer to fall whenever we get them. But that'd be cool, when man. I get one, I'll give you one. All right. Well, Kiefer, thanks for being on this week. Yeah. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. And we'll see you guys all next week. Later. Bye. 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 Crashing with friends. Podcast.